They're spawning in the top left corner here on Death Laura LE, playing as the red Protoss. It is Christianer. And playing here for the team of ENCE Esports. He's the blue Zerg player. He is Cero. Always exciting to see Cero ladder games. Well, he's a uh, you know he's a relatively new and upcoming player, and you know it's like uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, of course, uh, Cero absolutely insane uh already considered the best player in starcraft 2 history um if i if if i'm not cor uh, if i uh recall correctly i believe he is the highest earning starcraft 2 player in history so uh, and he's only been really kind of exploded since 2018 or so um, that's right and so in just a little bit little short year of like two to, two to three years it's insane how Cero has you know all of a sudden been considered being considered as one of the best player if not the best player in Starcraft 2 history I don't know there might be a certain Italian teenager who might take issue with that but you know what do I hear I just heard it from <laughs> Grapevine so yeah, I mean, no. Rainer is definitely making a case, but I think, you know, there's just, um, Cero has just has so much more accomplishments under his belt. It's only in 2020, uh, Rainer did finally win his first uh, major tournament. So, yeah, he has a lot of catching up to do. And he's certainly, oh, definitely. yeah, he's certainly young enough to uh, make a case. Uh, we shall see how he does in the future. Uh, but it's one thing to climb the mountain. It's another thing to stay on top of the mountain. And Cero has definitely stayed on top of the mountain for quite some time now, at least uh, mainly in the 2018 and the 2019 years. Yep, definitely. I, I do appreciate that you highlighted the specificity of the years, however, as we do see, you know, a lot of very absolutely just top, top tier Zergs. They have actually fallen off a little bit in 2020 and 2021. Serol and Dark, for example, not being as dominant as they used to be, which is, of course, completely understandable. You know, you 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 basically never get a StarCraft player as dominant as Serol was in 2018. Like, that was just absolutely insane. Yeah, for sure. And you know how it's so crazy because even as we say that Serol did not have the best year, uh, the best year in 2020, uh, a lot of people don't know, but or uh, maybe seemingly have forgotten that he actually ranked number one in the EPT uh, or ETP uh, points uh, in the EU. So he actually finished ahead of Rainer, uh, and you would think that because Rainer did win all those uh, EU uh, season finals or regional finals, that he was uh, he would be number one. But he several actually inched him uh, just very barely. Uh, in the uh, points there, the overall points. So, uh, as crazy as it sounds, even though Cero did have like a, I guess a comparably weaker year, he still actually ended up getting some nice results. Oh, definitely. Now we do see Christianer opening up with two Stargates. Second Stargate went down immediately after the Overlord was killed, and Christianer is going to look to get a little bit of damage done with this first Phoenix and the first Oracle together. All right, so the idea behind this is that you lift the queen up with the phoenix, and then, uh, of course, the phoenix can kind of take out take uh, some some of the spore callers' uh, pot damage, and then the oracle will, of course, rain fire on these drones. Oh, uh, getting a little bit deep with the oracle, however, as it does take a lot of hull damage. The phoenix still survives with a little bit of shields, but yeah, that oracle, I I believe, how many kills did it get? It got two kills. Not bad but definitely a lot of damage being taken. Yeah, I'm sure Christianer probably would have wanted a little bit more drone kills. Um, usually maybe around three to eight is kind of the, usually where Protoss gets their, uh, gets a, you know, the drone amount, uh, the amount of drones killed. Um, but you know what, at the very least he did save it so he can kind of maybe later in the game go back into the mineral line and uh, deal some damage or maybe go back to the mineral line and throw down a uh, stasis ward sometimes uh, the there's a fight going out in the middle and the zerg player is not paying attention and then the stasis ward kind of traps so much uh, workers 
Yep, definitely. Now, both players reaching 50 workers. Christian are allowed to take the third Nexus. We do see a small force of Lings coming up, but I don't think they're going to get much done aside from scouting that massive amount of Phoenixes. So, Serral, <laughs> I believe, is going to... Yep, there we go. We do see additional Spore Crawlers coming down. We do see a lot more drones coming down as well, right? Like, the solution here would be, I believe, just make more drones. Yep, and a lot more queens uh, right now and spore colors. Look at uh, look at all these phoenixes just taking out drone after drone. Now I do like the red Protoss's follow up behind this. We do see two robo bays about to finish. These phoenixes, of course, still sharking around trying to see whatever damage they can get done. But one phoenix, oh, one phoenix actually does get taken out by the spore crawler. I don't think that was worth those, I believe, handful of drones. I'm not too sure about that. Yeah. So right now the numbers right now seven phoenixes. Now he did actually stop making these phoenixes. So looks like he is going to go ahead and try to transition to the ground. As we see two robotics facility. Uh, I imagine that these are going to be for some oracles or not oracles, uh, immortals, and uh, possibly disruptors uh, once he throws down that robotics bay. Or it could be Colossus, but I'm thinking maybe Disruptors. Yeah, it actually looks like the Protoss is going to go for more of a traditional ICA type of build. We do see Charge plus one and a Templar Archives on the way, but Disruptors are never a bad choice against any sort of Zerg ground. Speaking of which, Serald is coming out with 12 Hydras and actually getting Hydra speed before Hydra range. Now, does that actually mean aggression? I'm not actually sure. You know, I think it's just mainly, um, it could definitely be, you know, for some aggression, but it could just mainly just to have the Hydra list sit back to defend against the Phoenixes. Um, we shall see. Uh, the creep isn't quite far enough that I would say is for aggression, but it might be because he's just kind of been busy dealing with the Phoenixes. Uh, but he might actually want to go ahead and just wait for the uh, infestation pit to go down and then start getting some some uh, infestors to pair up with those hydralis. Oh yes, that is a good pairing. Infestor Hydra can definitely get a lot of good damage done. Yeah, or maybe actually actually maybe as I say that uh, might be uh, the infestation pit might be for the hive so that he can get the vipers and vipers plus hydralis isn't a bad combo either. Oh, definitely. Serral going up to five bases as we do see Christianer's fourth up and running. Yep, this is definitely looking to be a macro game. Now, of course, things can change in an instant because these armies, or the Hydras especially, are very lethal as are Storms, which is just about to finish. So we will have to wait and see how the engagements in the future go. All right, Storm is about to finish. That is going to deal well with the co army composition that uh, Cero has. Uh, Storm doing great damage against all Lings, Banelings, and Hydralis. Plus, they can, of course, spell caster or feedback the um, the either potential infestors or the vipers that might be popping out after. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be vipers, uh, especially since uh, the infestor hasn't been uh, the infestor upgrades hasn't been researched. Uh, but yeah, the feedback can uh, go down on the Vipers, the Storm can go down on the rest of the ground army, and it should at least uh, theoretically deal well against what Cero has. Of course, it all comes down to engagement. If uh, Cero can get, kind of get a nice concave or a surround, that could well uh, work well in his favor. Yep, definitely. Now, the Spire is about to finish. Oh, is this Oracle actually going to get any... Nope, the Hydras do target that down. A little bit of luck going into Cyril's favor. So it looks like at this point our red Protoss does want to posture a little bit, does see how close the creep is to his fifth base, maybe looking to clear it out before getting any sort of damage done, as I do believe the decision here to be made is simply to... Oh, and actually a run-by gets picked off by the Lings. Definitely not a good trade, but yeah, it looks like both players are just about to max out. Now, the Banelings do roll forward, ah, and they actually eat a huge storm right smack in the faces. 
not a good trade at all. All right, so now we see storms, additional storms going down. This ICA army is rather threatening as the Banes do wash over the Archons, actually. Taking out all three Archons in the front for the cost of, I don't know, 50, 1500 Banelings or something crazy like that. But now all that's left in the front are the Hydras, and Hydras definitely do deal a lot of damage. That is a lot of storms, however, and it doesn't look like the Hydras will be able to engage. Oh, will they actually be able to save this hatchery? No, nope, it looks like the hatchery will just barely go down. Now this ICA army is vulnerable as the storms, the High Templar are starting to run out. Not that many Archons, Immortals starting to take whole damage as massive storms do go down. Now this is a very interesting game. We do see Zealots reinforcing. Banelings are not... Okay, a few good Baneling connections, but now all that's left would be Lings. Queens are actually lifted up by the by the phoenixes, excuse me, and it looks like Christiana will just barely be able to plow through with those five immortals and that one archon standing strong. Yeah, these uh, immortals adding so much heavy firepower and uh, not quite enough answer for them. Uh, and right now, Cero try trying to desperately remake some of these abandonings to uh, help deal with the uh, Charthot, but there's nothing to deal with these immortals and GG. In a surprise win that Christiana is going to take down Sero.